Hello and welcome to a new retrospective where today I've decided to start delving into the Games That Weren't archive which is a project that we've been sort of running uh, for just over 20 years now so if you're not familiar with the project the, the idea is that we we try and track down and preserve as many unreleased Commodore 64 games as we can and sort of make them available on the website so we try and tell the story behind about why they weren't released uh, we talk to the developers um, getting in inside information about what the game was going to be what it was going to be like and what was planned for it and any other stories we can find out and also where possible we try and provide a download so people can sort of download the game for themselves and check it out and uh, just see what what they potentially have missed and um, when I was kind of thinking of like retrospectives and games to cover it kind of dawned on me that we've got this very large archive of titles and um, it would be really good to maybe pick out some of the key titles and uh, do some sort of gameplay videos on them and talk a bit about the game and the stories behind it and that kind of thing just to kind of give something a little bit different to just the text on the website and um, give people the opportunity to see some of the game uh, and talk about it without if they haven't got easy access to an emulator for instance or an original 64 um, so the title I decided to cover as the first one out of the lot is um, possibly I think it probably is the very first unreleased game that I ever encountered and played uh, even though I didn't actually realize at the time that it was an unreleased game and that is Spellcast which was um, released by Zap on their cover mount on their cover tape um, which we could see here so this is the actual Zap Mega Tape 18 which I picked up when I was about nine or ten years old back in 1991 and um, I didn't get it with Zap 64 at all I, I used to go in second hand shops and I used to collect various mega tapes and power packs um, mainly because you know they were dirt cheap and used to get quite a few games on them um, I started collecting them because I wanted to kind of get the whole set just like uh, football stickers at the time I used to try and get the whole albums full up I, I used to see the same kind of thing with the mega tapes and the power packs I want to get the full set of numbers and that's before I used to sort of pick up the old magazines so as a result um, it only says on the front cover that this is Genesis Genesis is previously unseen spellcast, so I just kind of assumed it was a demo, didn't really think anything of it. But if I actually had the magazine at the time, then the story would have told you a bit more about why it was actually on the cover tape, and that I would have seen it was going to be a game that was never going to be finished. Um, but I didn't know that at the time. So here was this game, um, which I was completely blown away, uh, blown away by at the time as well. And the reason for that was because. I was a, a massive fan of the NES and um, basically what I used to do is, uh, as a kid I used to go into this electrical shop called Dixon's, um, so, um, I don't know if it's based in any other countries but it was primarily in the UK I think and um, they had like a, a NES set up down there which had about 10 games plugged in and you could select any of these NES games and play them for up to about 2-3 to three minutes before the console would then suddenly reset. So I used to kind of constantly play Super Mario Brothers and get to level 2 and then a reset and then I'd try and do the whole thing again because I loved it so much. But there was other games on there as well which I used to enjoy playing. There was um, Faxanadu and also another title called um, Castlevania. And so Spellcast reminded me a heck of a lot of Castlevania and, and Faxanadu for some reason. Uh, I don't know if it's something to do with the main character or the kind of just general feel of the game. Um, I'd say it's mostly a Castlevania-esque style game, mainly because of the main character and the weapons that you have in it. So straight away, because it felt like a NES title, I was kind of really drawn to it and just absolutely fell in love with it. So here um, we've got all of the weapons that we can pick up at the very start, and I assume that in the final game they might have spaced them out, so uh you collect them over time so just because it's a one level demo they just chucked everything at you so you could get a feel for it so here we've got if we press spacebar now we've got this sword that we can sort of swipe around in different directions by holding down the fire button and moving the joystick it's also got it's also quite neat that we have the sword roll with us when we roll uh and then we've got this skeleton or this skull that we can throw and that sort of bounces along and rolls quite neatly sort of similar to the um, bombs that you throw in uh, Terminator on the Master System and Mega Drive and then you've got this um, kind of spear javelin type thing which is my favourite weapon overall which has quite a nice little effect on it and in the bottom left corner we've got like an energy bottle which is our energy levels we've got the score in the middle and then we've got our lives followed by the weapon selection panel 
So I'm going to try and play through as much of the game as I can. I, I doubt I'll get very far because I'm not particularly good at talking and playing. So here we've got some bees we need to get rid of really quickly. Probably got the wrong weapon for it. It's quite a nice little sort of buzzing effect as well. Uh, so clearing that plant we get this chest very similar to what we get in uh, Ghouls and Ghosts. I was a bit too slow to open it. So if I was to open it, we'd get a ghost flying out. We'll probably see that in a bit. Uh, we've got that beehive up there, which has got a high-res overlay, I think. And then we've got these crows. And then coming up, we've got this large dragon creature as well. So you can sort of see the Castlevania sort of influences about it. But I don't think Castlevania was a direct influence for the developers. So the... The developers were Genesis Software, who are most famous for creating CJ's Elephant Antics, um, Spike and Transylvania, and um, also Nobby the Aardvark. And basically, the, the team uh, consisted of David Clark on coding, Jonathan Temples on graphics, and Ashley Hogg on sound. Uh, they were originally based at a Northern Ireland based development company called Choice Software. And um, the, so I'm just going to pause the game for a second while I'll tell you about it. Um, bit about Genesis so they were kind of at Choice Software and uh, Choice Software developed games such as like a beach volleyball for Ocean Software and they also were working on um, New Zealand stories and David Clark and the Genesis group were working on New Zealand story for uh, Ocean Software but they, they had the project taken off them so uh, the story goes is that they basically took the engine from New Zealand story one they eventually made CJ's Elephant Antics and got it sold to um, Codemasters but uh, before they did that or around about the same time they were developing this spell cast game as you can see here and um, they created this one level demo and they pitched it to various companies and for some very bizarre reason no one picked it up so I don't know if that's because they didn't pitch it to enough companies or the right companies but I'm really shocked that someone like Codemasters or even Zeppelin wouldn't have picked this game up because it is really nice it's one of the if you look at some of the games that Codemasters and Zeppelin have released over the years this is kind of far better than a lot of those titles so right I'm going to try and concentrate now and get on this log I'm sure I'm going to just fall through yep there we go so I have no shame if I lose my lives very early on I'm just going to Keep playing a couple of times and just show as much as I can. Also playing on a keyboard as well in Vice, which is not ideal. I need to get a proper joystick sorted out. Okay, this time here we go. <laughs> but didn't get the snake. Brilliant. If anything, if I lose all my lives now, then at least I can maybe show the title screen a bit earlier and the excellent Digi music by by Ashley Hogg. I can sort of talk through a little bit about some of the background story for some of the levels which um, the title screen sort of gives you a glimpse of what the rest of the game was going to be structured like and what levels were going to be based on it. I'm going to try and do this. Okay. Uh, what I'll do in a moment when I die is I'm going to show you a little glitch with that. Uh, work. I don't know if it's a glitch or a feature, I'm not sure, with the uh, with the log, which I sort of discovered by accident when I was a kid. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how I discovered it. Okay, so then we've got the treasure chest. If we open that, we get this ghost. Um, so something to mention, just by pure chance, but about a year or two ago, um, I was sent some discs by uh, Dean Higginbottom, who worked at a company called uh, Clockwise Productions, and... Um, he sent me a load of discs, and on one of those discs was a demo of Spellcast. So it was an actual demo disc that Dave Clark had sent out at the time. So I'm not sure why Clockwise had got hold of this disc, but it was uh, the exact, pretty much exactly the same preview as what was given away on Zap. But there's a couple of interesting differences between the previews. So the preview that Clockwise were given has like a debug mode left inside it. Uh, if we're going to die in a second. Um, and also, when you release the ghost from the chest, there's like a, an actual ghost noise that happens, which doesn't happen in the Zap preview. I don't know why that is. So maybe the one that they sent out, because I would assume the Zap 
the version that was sent to Zap and given on their tape would have been a later version, so it doesn't really make any sense that it's lacking certain features. Uh, debug mode maybe, I understand, but the sound, certain sound effects I'm not so sure. But anyway, um, interesting story with that demo disc as well is that written on the disc um, and crossed out was New Zealand Story with a 1989 development date. So because Spellcast was the only file on that disc, um, there was a very good chance that there was going to be remnants of New Zealand stories still on that disc. And you can sort of get recovery files by sort of unformatting the disc. And that's exactly what we did and uh, managed to find a couple of files. And luckily there was like this very early preview of the abandoned sort of choice software conversion that Dave and uh, Jonathan were working on at the time, which is quite cool. But anyway, right. So I've got another log, which I'll try and navigate as best I can. So we're going to see another creature in a minute, which is uh, a strange little troll creature that rolls skeletons at you. And I'll hopefully get past them. So it's sort of like a mini guardian really, uh, but at the very end of this demo it's quite an impressive guardian that was created. Come on. Okay, might get a little bit further before I completely die then. Or maybe not. Okay, what I might do in a minute is put a cheat on there and then try and show you that end of level guardian quickly. But before I do that, so this is the title screen to Spellcast. And in that background, which we, when we come back to in a second, you'll see the inspiration from Ghosts and Goblins. So in the arcade version of Ghosts and Goblins, uh, what used to happen was that when you started the game, it used to show you the map and show you where you were. So it show you the starting point in the forest and then it would kind of as you moved through that that map would scroll along with like a highlight on it and what they've done on the spellcast title screen is they've completely taken or ate that idea from ghosts and goblins to kind of show you the different parts of the map so you can see at the beginning on the far left you've got the forest area then you've got like a village area graveyard mountain area and then the final castle area and that would have been the level structure overall for the game so we just have some neat digi music there as well from ashley hock it's all right i'm gonna cheat a little bit okay well I thought it was going to cheat but I haven't actually got the action replay cartridge image plugged into the emulator what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to show you that glitch with the with the log that'll get me a little bit further so I'm not going to open that because of the ghost Okay, so when I was a kid playing this game, uh, I was kind of just for some reason had two joysticks plugged in at the time and just accidentally knocked into the joystick in port one. And then with the logs on the screen, I found some kind of weird storm sound, and then you could make the, lo the log float. Just really bizarre. It's just going to restart now because I'm going to go off the game map. Yeah, just really odd. Don't know why. If that's a feature or a bug, I'm not sure. But I thought that's kind of cool. Um, so I'm going to try that again and hopefully get us to float in the other direction if we can. Yeah, there we go.
So I'm fairly sure that you can see most of the map by doing this. And I'm pretty sure I got to the Guardian from doing this as well. Of course it could just completely glitch out and restart in a second. Gonna restart me there. Oh, not quite. Never mind. Okay, so I'm gonna try and use that log glitch to get past the next bit. So I don't think I fancy my chances getting too far. So hope I'm just hoping to show the Guardian really. Okay, so I've sort of cheated a little bit, so I can show you a bit further in the game. So I've put an uh, infinite lies cheat on, so I can keep dying now, and hopefully get to show you a bit of the guardian at the end. I absolutely suck at playing this on a keyboard. So I'm hoping that creature that throws the skulls is now dead. Yep, so we've just got these plant creatures to try and kill. I uh, don't think there's... oh there is a little energy pick up. There we go. So it should be fairly close now, so there's not too much more. So, one of the things that we try and do as well, when we look at previews on GTW, we try and hack around the code a little bit and see if there's anything sort of extra hidden in there which has not been shown. And there were a couple of things actually hidden in this game. Right, but I'll tell you about that in a second. So this is the Ender Level Guardian that I was mentioning. So it's the large scorpion type creature, it's quite cool. I think it's gonna get me to do that again, I think, yep. Yeah. Go. So that was going to be the end of the first level, and I think that's pretty much it. Okay, so that is spellcast, and uh, a glimpse of what is a pretty decent um, side-scrolling platformer game. And I would have loved to have seen what the other other levels would have been like. But just before we mentioned, uh, before we got to the Guardian, there. There were some actual hidden bits in the game, so on the on the website if you check it out, so when we were sort of poking through the graphics then one of the things that we found was um, uh, these uh, skeleton sprites here that you can just about just about make out, so we can zoom that in a bit, there we go. Um, so these were actually tucked away in the code and there is a, there's a kind of a 
a bit of code that you can sort of kick off to make these start appearing out of the ground um, but they're not actually in the demo um, as creatures that you can sort of fight against um, there's quite a few things like that really so uh, when someone else sort of started looking at the code um, they also found that the there were level pointers for those other levels that we kind of saw on the game map so there's kind of little indications uh, and sort of structure there for the rest of the game um, but unfortunately there's kind of no extra bits of level map or anything tucked away that we could find to unlock which is would, would have been quite a nice neat thing to to find um, when we kind of spoke to uh, John Temples in later years um, he mentioned that it was possible that some of the second level was actually started but he doesn't believe much more than that was actually done so there might not be anything extra to really find which we can play um, which is a shame but you know that's how it goes this is pretty much all that was produced but it's hoped that maybe someday someone might decide to actually pick up the preview and maybe reverse engineer it and uh, look to maybe finish it off because that sometimes happens we sometimes get people look at the unfinished projects we have in the site and decide to try and finish it off and I think this is a would be a great game to see finished but that's merely just from a personal point of view because it's one of the first titles I played it's something I grew up as with as a kid and was kind of desperate to see finished um, I don't know who knows what might happen um, but there you go so if you want to kind of read more about the about the game itself feel free to check out the website I'll leave the link in the description um, there's some details from Jonathan Temples directly about the game we hope in that one day maybe David Clark might sort of have a chat to us about the game a bit more and give us some extra information um, but that's all we have at the moment so uh, you can download the game for yourself and load it in any emulator or on the 64 mini or real 64 whatever you want to do um, so I hope you enjoyed it uh, if you want to kind of see more of these type of videos let me know um, feel free to leave any comments or anything I could try and improve um, most of these are just really done for my own enjoyment and not, not going to be spectacular works of art or anything like that but i'm hoping that you kind of find them interesting and um hopefully have so find something enjoyable rather than just like the usual sort of reams of text on the website okay so until next time see you later